Today is a practice with me webinar session um, and for our Pronunciation Pro students. So when you're a member of Pronunciation Pro, you get to come to these webinars, these live webinars and, um, and get your questions answered. Because as you go through the Pronunciation Pro course, um, there's a lot of inf you know, good information that goes step by step and it will help you, help you work gradually through the program. But um, I know that there's going to be a lot of questions along the way and a lot of specifics to you and, and your specific way of speaking. And I want to address those. Um, I want to address those those questions. And not only do those questions help you, but it helps the rest of the students as well. Um, and I mean, there's a lot of reasons why I love these webinars. But um, first of all, it gets your questions answered. It helps other students that might be like, oh, I didn't even think to, to ask that question. And it also gives me information as to what more I need to add to the program. Okay, so when I start seeing questions come up over and over again, it, it, it clues to me, it gives me the clue of, hey, I need to make another video, I need to add that in a certain way. And the way I look at it is, okay, you have a question about linking or connecting words together. This, is, this part of the program will be a perfect place to be able to address that because you have the right information here and here to be able to make sense of that. So, so these webinars are, are some of my favorite times because I get to, we get to interact, we get to answer questions, we get to help, I get to help you. Um, and not only does it help you, but it helps all of us. Okay, so um, starting this month, we are doing webinars two times a month. So it used to be just once a month, and now we, um, we've had such a great turnout for these webinars that I want to make sure that you're getting all your questions answered. So now we're doing it twice a month, and as we go along, if we need to increase that, we will do it. So um, whatever is going to help you be the most successful in this program, we want to make sure that that happens. So um, today... Uh, we are going to go through specific things and just to let you know the format what I like to do with these webinars is I'll give you a little introduction and then um, I have based on questions that have been emailed to me um, I have some set answers and things that I want to go over specifically and today we're actually going to be talking about common reductions it seemed like the emails that I was getting with the questions that I was getting they all kind of seem to be about these common reductions. Like sometimes Americans don't pronounce things perfectly. And so when am I supposed to say it perfectly with the perfect pronunciation? And when am I supposed to kind of reduce it or, or drop sounds? Or what am I supposed to do in those situations? And so that's what we're going to talk about a little bit at the beginning today. And then... Um, and then later on, and then after those first initial um, topics about common reductions, then I'm going to open it up for questions. So those of you who are attending live at this webinar, um, you have a chance to answer, ask questions. So in the questions box, you'll have a, a, a questions box in there in the panel, and you'll have an opportunity to write out your questions. And um, if you're in a position where you can, I can unmute your microphone and we can kind of talk, that helps so that I can specific, get more specific in what you need, you know, what your question is and even have you practice it and, and have me listen a little bit and see how, how we can help that. All right, so just a little introduction to me if this is your first time coming to the webinar. Um, my name is Annie Rudin. And I am a certified speech language pathologist is my training and background. So I have a master's in communication sciences and disorders. And, and since graduation, I've, um, or since kind of going through my schooling, I've more specialized in um, accent reduction training is, sometimes, is what it's sometimes called. Um, English pronunciation and fluency is what I tend to refer to it as, or just accent modification, because really we all have accents, right? But what we're trying to do and what I teach is the American accent and making sure that when you're speaking with native English speakers, that you're speaking in a way that will be you will be the most easily understood by by native English speakers. Um, and that has to do with learning the sounds of English and the rhythm of English. OK, so as we go through um, what we're doing is we're building off of, of what you're learning through the pronunciation pro course. Um, and as you go through the course, you'll be learning step by step 
how to accomplish that. So just so this picture is um, from last week, we went to Disneyland with my oldest two. So I have three kids. I have three boys, ages six, four, and one and a half. And we, we left our one and a half with grandma. And we um, went and had two days of just fun with my kids. And this is the end of the first day where they just completely crashed. And they were so tired because they've been playing so hard all day long. So. It was a fun day. Um, oh, here are just a, another, a few other pictures of it. Man, that was fun. <laughs> All right, just to introduce a little bit, so um, to, our, to the Pronunciation Pro team, you might be hearing from some of uh, these members as we go along. This is actually the first time I'm introducing these members because these team members because they're, um, they're new to the, to the Pronunciation Pro team. And I'm so excited about it because um, they have made my life so much better <laughs> because they're so amazing and they're doing such a good job to kind of help the students because, you know, there's been such a positive response to the Pronunciation Pro course and and it became too much for just me alone to be able to um, manage manage by myself. So I had to get some really, really sharp people on on board to help me. So this is this is Gideoni Wilson. She is my administrative assistant, so she will be helping with emails and helping with accounts and, and helping with a lot of things. She is actually trilingual, so she, her native language is um, Spanish, but she grew up in the United States, um, and she's, she's from Mexico, her parents from Mexico, and um, she, she moved over to the States when she was young, so she, she's, she has a very um, clear American accent. And but then she also um, is studying Mandarin right now and has several years of Mandarin underneath her. And she she and her husband have um, lived in Beijing for um, a few different times, and they're actually looking to move to Taiwan here this this summer. So um, so she'll be a wonderful part of this team. I'm excited to have her. We also have Andrea Lobb, who is. Um, who is another English pronunciation trainer. So she is she will be helping with specifically with the trainings through the the um the feedback that a lot of you uh send in for your week 1 feedback which is a bonus. So all of the basic members if you're um a basic member you get feedback on your week 1 assignment. And so what's so nice about that is that you get personalized feedback from our trainers and Andrea will be one of one that will be helping with those. And it gives you a kind of a personalized idea of what you're doing with your speech so that you can, you can improve. Um, Andrea is, uh, has been a clinician for 12 years. So she's, she has the same kind of training as me, but she's been doing it. She's been, she's been working as a clinician for um, a long time and has a lot of great experience under her belt. Um, and she is also just an amazing um, uh, athlete. So she, she skis and she bikes and she just had a little baby girl um, last September that is as adorable as can be. So we're excited to have her on. All right. So today, um, and I, I forgot to mention this, I had it in the beginning slide, but February, okay, the pronunciation of February. I want to make sure that this is clear um, because February that R in February is silent. You don't pronounce it. So February, and I should probably go back. Maybe I'll, I'll go back to that um, slide a little bit later. But February, actually, let's, let's jump back right here. Okay, so February, we have, if, if you've gotten to, let's see, in week two, we talk about the invisible Y. And the invisible Y rule is when there is a consonant and then the letter U. So if you see the consonant B, R, and then U there, well, R we're going to take out because we don't even pronounce that. But the B and the U, we have a consonant B and then the, the value, we always put an invisible Y in there, okay, to transition. So February, February. All right, I want all of you to make sure that you're saying that correctly so that we don't get caught on that. All right, and February, and actually tomorrow in the United States, we're, we celebrate 
um, Valentine's Day, which is um, kind of just to celebrate love, um, not only just for, you know, your significant other, but love for family and friends and, and things like that. So um, that's why the heart. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of love here today because we're, we're, this is the time of year that we're celebrating that. Okay, so let's jump into the questions. And as I'm getting into these set specific questions of, from people who have emailed in, um, I want you also to be thinking of your own questions. And if you have questions of your own that you're wanting addressed today, then I want you to go into um, the questions box and write it as soon as you think of it. So once I'm done with these set questions, I'll be going through and looking at what your questions are. Okay, so Pedro from Spain is saying, is there any rule for those long words in which they have mute vowels? So what he's asking is there certain words when you look at the way it's spelled and then the way it's pronounced, it seems like there's some vowels that are not pronounced specifically. And you're absolutely right, Pedro. Um, there are specific words. And so he's asking, is there a rule or how do I know when this is supposed to happen? So we're going to address that right now. Um, so what I have here. I put together a little, here, this actually, let's go here. I put together a little uh, worksheet, and this will be available for you um, on the website. I'm going to put it both in attached to the webinar, um, under the webinar recording of this, and I'll also add it as a bonus lesson. And these are ones that I'm going to create small videos for, so um, to put into those bonus lessons. But for now, until I can get those videos made um, here in the next month, uh, we're going to just put this this um, worksheet there at the bottom um, in those bonus lesson section, okay? But to answer your question, Pedro, no, there's not a specific rule, unfortunately. I can't say, okay, it's just when these certain situations happen, then you drop the vowel. Um, but I can give you a really good list of very common ones. And we've kind of, I've, I've made a list here of the most common words that have these dropped vowels and really a dropped syllable, if you think about it. So we're going to go through and practice these words and make sure that they, you can, you know, you're, you're getting an idea of what these dropped vowel words should be pronounced as, okay? So what, I, what we're talking about is instead of a word like, so like family, okay? Family is how, and I'm just there at the top here um, with this example. So family is, family is the, the way native English speakers say it is family. So if you see here, family, family, okay? So we've reduced it down to two syllables because really it should be family, family, okay? So when you look at the rules of how to, how to break down syllables, and you learn that in week three when we're talking about word stress, so if you haven't gotten there yet, don't worry about that. But we're, when we break down into syllables, the word into syllables, sometimes, and this just has um, evolved because of just, you know, native English speakers changing changing the way we pronounce things. And this has now become the standard, okay? If you look up the pronunciation of a word and listen, you know, like on dictionary.com or something, it's going to say family. It's not going to say family, okay? So this is, these are how these words have been, uh, how these words have evolved. So this one, family. So what I've done with these is I say the, I have the word here, but really, we don't want to just listen for how, we don't want to look at the the way it's spelled. We want to listen for how it sounds, okay? So I, you kind of have to erase this, you know, this idea of just like, how does it, how is it spelled? And just listen. And that's really how kids learn. That's why, you know, in those early stages, if you're exposed to a language and how kids learn a language, they don't learn it by reading. They don't learn a language by reading. They learn a language by listening. And so those, that's why those listening skills are so important as you're learning pronunciation is it's not the way it's spelled, it's the way it sounds. Okay, so here's what we want to do. I've, I've underlined the, the vowel that's getting dropped, okay? And then in Rudin Phonetics, um, which you go over in week one, um, I wrote out kind of how it should be pronounced, okay? So we have, so average, and I'm going to say the word 
And I want you, hopefully you're in a situation where you can say it out loud, but I want you to practice with me, okay? So average. And actually, how about, can I get a volunteer for someone to kind of help um, help do this? Um, if you're, you're interested in volunteering, then go ahead and um, go ahead and kind of put up the raise your hand icon um, if someone wants to try this out. And hopefully, let's see. Okay, good. Olabenga. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to unmute you. And Olabenga, you there? Yep. Okay, perfect. Okay, will you will you help go through some of these words for me? So I'm going to say it, and then I want you to say it. And think of it in terms of this rudin phonetics, okay? So we're going to reduce the syllable, not have it be average, but we're going to do average. Can you say that for okay. me? Mm -hmm. Average. Perfect. Okay, so it won't be automatically. We're going to say automatically. Automatically. Perfect. Okay, good. So it's not going to be basically. It's going to be basically. Basically. Mm hmm Good. Okay. It's not going to be beverage. It's going to be beverage. Beverage. Excellent. Okay. It's not going to be broccoli. It's going to be broccoli. Broccoli. Perfect. Okay, it's not going to be business, business, it's going to be business. Business. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to be Catholic, it's going to be Catholic. Catholic. Yep, and this one's an interesting one because it has that TH and the L right next to each other. So if you find that this, hard, this combination is a little bit hard to kind of get your mouth in position for the TH and then into the, you know, up to the L, don't worry about it because that is a tricky combination. So just you just it just takes practicing getting from that those those sounds to the next. Okay, great job, Olabenga. I'm gonna have somebody else um kind of continue on. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right, Duquan, let's have you do it. I'm gonna unmute you. You there? I am here. Hello, hello. Good to good to have you hello. here. Okay, so let's see. We they left on on Catholic. So I'm going to have you start with, it's not going to be chocolate, it's going to be chocolate. Chocolate. Perfect. Okay, it's not going to be definitely, it's going to be definitely. Definitely. Okay, I want to get that. Definitely. Yeah, there we go. Go ahead, say it again. Definitely. Definite, definitely, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, there you go. Okay, and it's going to be first syllable stress. And that's one thing I'm going to change when I put this onto the um, bonus lessons. I'm going to highlight what, what syllable should be stressed as well because I think that's going to be an important part. Okay, De it's not going to be desperate. It's going to be desperate. Desperate. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, I kind of changed the P to the B. And there's not really any specific reason for this except that there's um, – when I was saying it and I was saying it out loud and kind of thinking of how I would say it specifically, it wasn't necessarily a P sound. It wasn't desperate. It, you know, I, when I, when I was saying it, the common way of saying it is desperate, desperate with more of a burr, brit. Okay. Desperate. Yeah. Per yeah. Perfect. Okay. So how about not different, but different. Different. Perfect. Okay, not evening, but evening. Evening. Good. And not every, but every. Every. Mm -hmm. Okay, and let's do one more. Not family, but family. Family. Perfect. Okay, that's exactly right. Thank you for volunteering. I'm going to see if there's, let's see. Does anybody else want to try it? Okay, Monica, perfect. Okay, I'm going to mute you. Um, and Monica, let me unmute you. Are you there, Monica? Monica, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Perfect. Okay, so let's go through. It's not general, but it's general. General. Perfect. 
Yep, okay, not generally, but generally. Generally. Mm -hmm. And not interesting, but interesting. Interesting. Okay, and I want to point something out that, um, that I, I have it as TR, but really when TR comes around, it kind of, and if you think about it, interesting, it kind of gets a CH pronunciation a little bit. In interesting. Interesting. Interesting, yeah, interesting. So that's kind of that ch-ch sound. When TR, it's kind of like truck and train, there is more of a ch ch that ch sound so that's something just to kind of listen for for that whenever a tr is in place so sometimes i'm like i'm not sure if i should write it as ch or tr because there is there is a very similar sound there okay but how about interest interest perfect okay how about logic it's not logically it's logically logically perfect okay not opera but opera Opera. Okay, good. And how about not practically, but practically? Practi practically. Yeah, there you go. So do it one more time. Practically. Yeah, there you go. Okay, and then separate. Separate. Mm -hmm. How about several? Several. Good. How about temperature? Temperature. Perfect. And this one is a very common one. Um, not vegetable, but vegetable. Vegetable. Good. And I like how when I was writing this out, I was like, wow, this is an interesting one because it has the ch sound vegetable. Vegetable. Um, vegetable. Yeah, good. And then how about veteran? Veteran. Very good. Veteran. So in, in, this, in this situation, as I was listening for it, I'm like, you can do it as T-A-T-R or C-H. Are because it kind of has a similar sound. Perfect. Thank you, Monica. All right, I'm gonna. Yeah. Monica, you did a great. All right. Okay. So that that's kind of that um, idea of some of these common words where there's just a vowel or a syllable that's dropped in there, and it happens. And there's not a rule for it, unfortunately, but it does happen. Okay. So right in here, do you have a nice? This is from Deprendra, and he says, "Do you have a nice? Do you have nice materials on drop vowels like cotton and mountain?" Okay. So this is an interesting one. Um, but he says, "Well, why is you know why is a word such as 13 don't have it even though they have the two vowels between the t and the n like mountain?" So let me go through the the rule here. And what he's talking about is there. It's usually not pronounced as cotton cotton or mountain, okay, with that T sound in there. It's usually cotton and mountain, okay? Do you hear kind of that mountain, mountain, mountain? Um, okay, so, so that's what we're going to talk about a little bit here. So here's the rule. There is a rule for this one, thankfully. <laughs> um, so here's what we have. So with the dropped vowel and a glottal stop there, question is, how do you pronounce some of these words? The rule is when there is a T and then a vowel or two and then an N, then the vowel gets dropped and the T won't be released. And this is where that glottal stop, this is kind of the official term for that is called a glottal stop. And what that means is that your vocal cords basically come together, mount N, and then they kind of stop the sound and then release it. Okay, so mount in, caught in, caught in. Okay, so that, that's what's happening. So it's really when we're talking about voiced and voiceless sounds and things like that and controlling our voice, that's what we're talking about here. It's what's happening in our throat. Um, so so it, you don't release the sound. So for those of you who have been through the linking lesson um, in weeks six or seven, um, we talk about when, when when a sound, an ending sound ends with like a T sound and the next word begins with a D, we don't necessarily release that T sound. So like a word like get, get down, we don't really, or a phrase like get down, see right here, get down, we don't necessarily say get down, get down. What happens is that T and the D are in the same type of position, so we just share the pronunciation. 
And you'll learn more about that in linking. But get down. Get down. So what happens is our T comes into position, but then we don't release the T, we release the D. Get down. So a similar thing is happening here is where we're hitting the T, we're going to come up and our mouth going to get in position for the T sound like cotton, 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 okay, cotton. We're going to kind of hit with the T and then we're going to come, come in with the N. So hopefully that makes sense. So what we're going to do is one thing that you can say is go uh-oh. Okay, so here's kind of training that, that vocal cords. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, so does anybody want to um, kind of want to help and volunteer with doing this? Because <laughs> it helps to kind of hear how you're doing it and, and, uh, and train that way. So if you want to, raise your hand. Um, there's a little hand icon that you can kind of push and raise your hand. So, okay, Olubenga. And Daquan, all right, we'll have you both do that. Okay, Olubenga, here we go. So um, I want you to do this for me. Uh-oh. 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 And then kind of pause a little bit more between. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Perfect. Okay, so that's the kind of the stop of the vocal cords that we want between those sounds. Uh-oh. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go in, we're going to go through this word list of some of these words that have that T, then a vowel, and the N where the vowel gets dropped, where the vowel's getting dropped here, and that T becomes more of a glottal stop. So say this for me, cotton. Cotton. Perfect. Cotton. How about button? Button. Mm -hmm, good. How about forgotten? Forgotten. Forgotten. Yeah, do it one more time. Forgotten. Mm -hmm. And what we have to do is kind of make sure that, you know, what we don't want is forgotten and kind of really emphasizing it because we have to kind of, we have to smooth it out a little bit. But um, so like, uh, I, I, I have forgotten my paper. Say that for me. I have forgotten my paper. Mm -hmm, there you go. Okay, so that's something to practice. And I'll put in the bonus lessons, I'll add sentences to this worksheet so that you have a chance to kind of practice it in sentences as well. So say another one, written. Written. Perfect, yep, written. Okay, and how about certain? Certain. Good. And mountain. Mountain. Yeah, mountain. And we want to get make sure that that vowel is rounded. Mountain. Mountain. There you go. Good. Important. So in this. Im Important. Okay, and I actually forgot the T at the end because there does need to be a T there. Important. Important. Mm -hmm. Get the T at the end. Important. Important. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then fountain. Fountain. Okay, good. Um, so I did see, thank you, Olubenga, you're doing a great job with that. So I will want you to practice that in sentences, and I'll give you kind of sentences um, in, with this worksheet. But I want you to practice kind of flowing, you know, making sure that that can flow within a sentence and flow naturally for you. All right? I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. For you? Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes when I try to put melody in my voice, I use, instead of saying important, I would say important, then it leads me to stressing the first part of it, which usually you've been correcting me for that. Yeah. Most of the time. <laughs> yeah. So it's the yeah, it's that word stress that we're we're working on, right? So yeah. so is the question kind of how to get the word stress or how to know what the stress should be? Uh, sometimes we misplace the stress. Instead of saying important, we may say important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's that that saying, saying important is stressing the first part of it. Right. Which is incorrect, right? Which is incorrect. <laughs> yeah. And that's the fun that's the that's the thing about word stress is there is a right and a wrong way to do it. With, with sentence stress, it's and, and and for those who are haven't gotten there yet, word stress we work on week three, sentence stress is week four, 
and then we continue to practice them throughout. But word stress, there is a very right and wrong way of doing it, right? There is a certain vowel, a certain syllable that needs to be stressed. And if you stress a wrong a syllable other than that, it just sounds off. The rhythm just sounds off. So I wish there was, we know within that word stress lesson, as you know, Elabanga, because you've been through it, there are certain rules that we have that we can kind of make sure, you know, learn which syllable to stress. But a lot of it just comes with time and experience with certain words. So as you continue to practice and as you continue to get exposed okay. to other vocabulary, you'll learn the right and wrong way of stressing it. And this program is designed to really help you tune your ear to how things are supposed to be sound and how that's supposed to be. So, um, okay. so I would just say just be patient with yourself. And um, just okay. make sure you're practicing, practicing consistently enough that you're coming across new words that you can be like, oh, OK, I've been pronouncing it as important instead of important. And now now I know that that's supposed to be that way. So I'm going to start listening for that a little bit more now. OK, thank you. Good. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Good. So I did see. Duck one, I did see that you raised your hand at the beginning for this. So will you finish off these examples for me? Are you there? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I want to hear carton. Con. Say, do that again, carton. Uh, con. Okay, so I need a little bit more of like a break in your voice. So I want you to say this for me. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There you go. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Perfect. So that's exactly the kind of break that we need. So, so say this for me. Button. Button. That's exactly right. Okay. So then do kitten. Kitten. Perfect. Bitten. Bitten. And Martin. Martin. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good. Okay. So. That's that's kind of the lesson there. I will add sentences so that you can get more practice putting it into more of a natural context. But words to practice, make sure that uh, you can you can get that kind of stop. So do uh oh to try and try and get that stop in your voice before you move on. All right. Sorry, that took a little bit longer than I was hoping. So um, I was thinking it would. But let's jump into your questions. Um. Okay, so Olabanga, we answered yours. How can you build listening skills? So Amir, this is a great question. How can I build listening skills? So Omer, what what uh, week of the program are you in? Um, where? Let's see. I'm gonna actually open up. See if I can. Uh oh, I'm. Uh, he's not here anymore. So I must have had to leave. So um. Listening skills, and this is a good question just for any of us, but how do you build listening skills? Well, that's what we're, we're, I've designed into the program to help you start building those listening skills we, you know, step by step. So, um, so the listening quizzes that you have before each sound, um, and then there's a, a number of different things that we do that kind of help build that listening. So, um, so as you go through, it, you know, those, that, will be, that will be built slowly along the way. Um, I think that the more you the more you listen, um, the more you listen with your focus on pronunciation and your focus on just listening for that rhythm as you're learning these lessons and and learning kind of how to understand pronunciation in a different way, um, then you'll start listening to people. And I, I have my students say it all the time is like, Oh, I was listening to them talk and I, I noticed that he did this one reduction or I noticed that he did this one linking here. And it was because that's what he they had been studying that week in there. So um, so that's that's how listening skills are going to be built. It doesn't happen overnight, but just be be patient with the process. OK. Um, OK, so let's see, what is the difference? between confederate and confederacy okay so i'm going to actually pull up and i'll just use this because it's here um but confederate confederate and confed 
Confederacy. Okay, Confederate and Confederacy. The stress is the same for both of them. So we still have Confederate. Fed is the stress syllable on both of these. Federate and Federacy. But if I'm going to pronounce them, I'm going to write them out. Con. Let's see. Confederate is going to have an it ending, confederate, and then confederacy is going to be issy at the end. Confederacy. Okay? So you kind of have those two different ending sounds. So it's just the ending that's different. Good question. Um, okay. Uh, Brahma, is that your, you wrote the letter, um, Y in there. I'm going to unmute you and see, uh, Brahma, you there? Yes. Hi. So you wrote the letter Y in there. Is that talking about the Y sound? Yes. Yeah. No, I just want to volunteer some of your examples. So <laughs> yeah. So this it. is a good one. What's your native language? Okay. Um, native language, Indian language called Telugu. Okay. Good. So is, I'm guessing there's not a ya yeah, ya yeah sound in in your native language, is that right? Yeah, um, yeah uh, no. I mean, uh, the, I, I you know typed the y is because you asked her, uh, do you like to volunteer? I said yes. That is for uh, I want to volunteer one of the examples. Not I'm not I'm not asking the question. <laughs> oh okay. Oh for the volunteer for it. So oh, okay, gotcha. So um. When you're wanting to volunteer, do you see the raise the hand icon? Okay. That's that's how you volunteer for it. Was there something that you wanted to try now that I have you unmuted? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, let's what do you um, want to try? Do you want to try these glottal stops? Yeah, okay. Okay. So so, start with, yeah, say say this first one for me. Cotton. Cotton. Yep. Okay, go to the next one. Button. Okay, so I heard I heard you actually pronounce the T there. So uh, so kind of stop the T there. So button. Button. There you go. Forgotten. Forgotten. There you go. Written. Written. Okay, do the next one. S certain. Good. And the next one. Mountain. Good. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. So you're getting that glottal stop in there. So okay. T has to be silent there. Yeah, so it's more, you're not really getting that T sound in there. You're not releasing that T sound. You're really just kind of going cotton. <laughs> cotton. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like mountain is it's not mountain. It's a mountain. Exactly. Exactly. And that's just how, I mean, native English speakers have just kind of morphed it <laughs> into, into that. But really now that's the standard. And that's how it kind of evolves as things, things kind of get naturally changed and then they officially get recognized as this is now the official way of doing it. <laughs> okay. So, okay, so great. Do you have any other important. questions? Well, I have. No, thank you. Okay, oh, good. It. All right, good. Okay, so let's see. Let's see. Okay, so um, Catherine, you're saying, how do I get rid of my accent? Well, there's there's kind of a two-part thing of this is um, nobody can get rid of an accent. They can just change their accent to a different one. So so I'm guessing you're wondering about the, uh, you know, making sure that American accent kind of when you're speaking English and and there's obviously people who from England or from Australia or some different places that say, well, this is the right way of speaking English. And actually English... Um, from from England um, is I guess that's the official correct English, but we uh, us Americans kind of beg to differ. But um, but if you're learning American English, then that's what we're teaching here. And to get rid of your accent completely, um, I I know it's possible because you see you see people like um, you know, with the, the actors and actresses and things like that, that um, are able to put on in a perfect American accent. And I want, I want to make sure that it's clear that, that you understand that for them to do that, um, that's their full-time job. That's what they do for a living. That's kind of their main focus is making sure that they can sound that way. So they've put a lot of practice into it. <laughs> 
a lot of time, a lot of practice, a lot of money, and to be able to make sure that they can speak in that way, okay? So what we're doing here is we're teaching kind of the sounds, make sure you're saying the sounds correct, that we're, you're starting to really tune your ear into the rhythm. If you're interested in kind of completely sounding natural and native, that sure is going to take a lot of time and practice. If you're not, if you're, if you're, um, and it's possible if that's your motivation, then, then, you know, you can definitely get there. Um, I think that this, this program is, um, a beginning of that to make sure that you can kind of get rid of your accent completely. My focus with this program is to make sure that you're clear, you're understood, and that you're you're taking on you're starting to really take on that rhythm and that natural way that native english speakers speak okay will it completely get rid of your accent in 12 weeks no um no it won't it won't do that and i'm not going to claim that it does anything that claims that it does is is probably too good to be true but what we're going to do is we're going to start moving you closer to that and the more you practice and the more you um more you work on it the closer you're going to get the faster you're going to get there um so that's kind of the idea with this program is you're starting on your path to you know speaking clearly and having that you know and people are in different places in that in that journey in that process so what we're trying to do with this program is take you from where you are and start moving you closer to to what a native English speaker would sound like. Okay. Okay, Lourdes, um, you can't change anything if you don't notice it. That is absolutely correct. And um, so that is a big, big thing about noticing. Um, you know, a lot of times I think this is for anything that until you notice there's a problem, how do you fix the problem? And that's, that's why, um, we have certain things in place to help you be able to figure out what it is that you're doing wrong. So here are a number of things that we have. First of all, um, first of all, when you have a, when you're working on your pronunciation through this course, when you get started, we offer even with the basic membership, we offer um, feedback in your week one assignment. And this is for everyone. I just want to make sure that you get some feedback. From our trainers because that's so important because again if you don't <laughs> if, you, if you don't notice it you can't change it um, <clears throat> excuse me um, so that week one feedback is very important we also have a number of things such as like the plus package and the premier package the plus package and the premier pa package we have a full accent assessment that we goes through your whole you know we do this 15 minute recording um, and go walk you through, through all different kinds of words and sentences and and passages so that we can get a full look of your speech and make sure that we can point out anything that might be a problem for you. Um, and so that's the full accent assessment, and that's included in our Plus and Premier package. You can also buy it um, as an add-on to the basic membership if you want as well. So you can just look at the pricing page for that. But then also with the Plus package, then um, what happens with the plus package is you can, and let me just actually go here, plus package, you get feedback, you get that um, full accent assessment, and then you get feedback every week of, week of the program. So again, if you don't notice it, you can't change it. So you, you know, that's our way of helping you say, hey, this is what I'm, this is what I'm hearing. Here's how you change it. So that's a really effective way of doing it. The plus package I know a lot of you are actually in that plus package that are here today. And, you know, it's one of my favorite ones. It, it's really my favorite. It's it's wonderful because it, it really does help you understand your pronunciation specifically. Um, and then the premier package, obviously, as you're working live with the trainers, then um, then that really helps you kind of understand. But I was just going to show the additional packages down here. We do have the full accent assessment right here so that you can get that full comprehensive look at what you're doing. Okay, let's move on here. Okay, Amir, um, he's asking about the beginning H sound. So this is something that I notice a lot with my um, French speaking clients and, um, you know, clients that I have from Haiti and kind of French Creole. Um, the H sound. Um, he's saying sometimes 
there are some words that beginning with, with H that we omit the H sound um, and pronounce the next vowel. How do I know which words are supposed to be pronounced and not supposed to be pronounced? So I have a worksheet and I'm actually going to um, pull up, let me pull up that worksheet real quick since we have a little bit of time here. Um, so I have a worksheet that kind of shows you the most common ones. There's not an, a specific rule um, attached to when you're supposed to say an H and when you're not. They, it's kind of like those common vowel reductions where I just need to give you a list and make sure that you can, you know, become familiar with that with that list. Um, so let me, and I haven't made this into a pretty little worksheet yet, and I'll do that for you. But um, the silent H, um, there is a little bit of information about like kind of the origin of it uh, as to how, how we pronounce it. But really, here is a list of words that we don't say the H. Most of the time we do say the H sound. We say like how. Um, one thing that one, one word that typically get, kind of sneaks by that you want to make sure you're getting the H sound is, in is with who. Who, I was just um, giving feedback to one of my students on that one. Who, who, but however, how, him, he, um, his, all of these words have the H sound in it. But here is a list of the most frequently used words that don't have the H pronunciation. So this would be like honest, alleluia, air, honor, um, herbal, hour. Spaghetti. Okay, so there's no H pronunciation there. And then it gets kind of into words that have the H sound but really are not pronounced there. But here's your list of the most common ones. Um, and if you have any that needs to be added to that that you've noticed that I just skipped over, please let me know because that's uh, that's important to make sure that we're, we're gathering um, as much information here as we can for you. All right. Okay, so Henry has a question about um, the S pronunciation between two vowels. For example, chose and house and the final S sound words like she loves. So, okay, so Henry, this is what I, um, this is a good question. Let's see, sorry. Okay, so you're, what you're referring to is when do we pronounce it as an S sound and when do we pronounce it as the H sound? Is that right? I'm going to unmute you, Henry. Henry, are you there? Henry? Oh, maybe he's not. His microphone's not available. Okay, so basically what he's asking is, okay, so how do I know, in an, and with Spanish speakers, this is a very, very common one, how do I know if it should be an S pronunciation and when it should be an, a Z pronunciation? So again, I have kind of a rudimentary um, rule. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the most straightforward rule, but um, but it helps a little bit. And the idea here, and kind of to sum it up, and I need to change this so that it's a little bit more um, simple in the explanation of it, but when, when an S letter follows a voiced sound or a voiced, you know, all vowels are voiced, so a voiced consonant or a vowel, then it typically gets a Z pronunciation. Okay, it's kind of like that voiced and voiceless um, rule for the 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 uh, the past tense ed ending sound is like when the root word ends with a a voiced sound, and this is in week two if you haven't gotten there yet. When a root word ends in a voiced sound for the past tense ed ending, then we add a d. So like I um so uh. Now I'm having a hard time thinking of a, uh, I tried, okay? I tried, try has a voiced ending, so we're going to put a D ending at the end. So it's kind of carrying the voice to the voiced and the voiceless to the voiceless. So when there's a voiced sound right before the Z, so like this, a phonetic rule is this, if an S follows a vowel or a voiced consonant, it sounds like a Z sound. There are exceptions to this rule, but it tends to be the case. So here are the most common words that have a Z pronunciation instead of an S. So is, rise, pose, 
eyes, confuse, easy, says, was, raise, rose. Okay, so it has more of that Z. The most common ones, his and is, his and is. This happens so that so much and use versus use. It has two different meanings there depending on, or two different contexts there depending on the S and the Z. Okay, so this, this S and Z rules in the bonus lessons um, and the uh, and anything that I'm using today, I'm going to either either is in the bonus lessons or I'll be adding it to the bonus lessons. OK. Let's see. Yeah, so Henry is saying the Z sound is really explosive when Spanish speakers saying it, say it. So it's, you know, it becomes a little bit more abrupt. So is it nice? Is it nice? Most of it, you know, it's really about controlling that whether the voice is on or not is 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 so kind of practice these words and practice kind of toning it down a little bit making sure you're not getting that is is you know too much of a z sound but just kind of how can i quiet it down is 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 and still engage that throat because it's all about engaging that throat and turning on that voice good question um Catherine's asking are all the webinars a fixed time like from 9 a.m to 10 10 a.m no, they're not. I try to switch them around and I'm I'm kind of playing with different <laughs> times to see what's going to be work best. But our next webinar is actually on a Saturday. Um it's a Saturday morning. Um I think from my time it's like 8 to 9 a.m., which, you know, for you it's going to be really late, but um but because our students are all over the world, um, I'm trying to switch around the times and do afternoons or evenings or mornings or weekends so that we can accommodate everyone. Um, I haven't come to a perfect solution on that, but um, but I'm working on it. <laughs> if you have any suggestions or ways to kind of that you've seen other people do it, other people with web, you know who do webinars kind of do it, then I'm I'm up for suggestions. Um, okay, so we're gonna have time for one more. One more question, Omir, and it did sound like, it, I guess your, Henry's microphone was having problems, so sorry about that, Henry. Um, says, you sound, sometimes we pronunciate, pronunciate A like umbrella, and sometimes we pronounce U like university. How can I distinguish it? Umbrella and university. Um, okay, so this has to do with the long and short vowel rules, and I am going to... Um, let me pull up that worksheet. This is going to be under week five. Once you get into the vowels in week five, then we start talking about the rules of long and short vowels. And actually, I have this worksheet along with your materials, but I don't have a video. It, it doesn't, I don't include this specifically. Sorry, I'm going to show this. Um, I don't specifically um, talk about the rules of long and short vowels. That's one of those videos that I'm working on right now. Um, to add into the program. But so let me explain this a little really quick here um, before we end. So the rules are long and about short vowels. So when he what he's saying is sometimes the U sounds more like an uh and sometimes it sounds like a U, like in university or umbrella. So the difference there is umbrella is a short vowel, what we consider a short pronunciation. It's kind of like, you know, it's this uh, uh. And then U which actually I don't have on this list. I need to edit it. But a long vowel, like saying the letter U, you know, the sound U is considered a long vowel. Um, long vowels tend to say the name of its letter. So like O, A, I, U, E, those are, those are long vowels. And basically it doesn't mean that we hold them longer. It just means that we have a longer movement of our mouth, if that makes sense. So like e, u, o, a, i, u, o, or ow, oi. You see how there's just, and for those of you who can see my camera, there's just a little bit more movement of the mouth versus short vowels are a, e, i, a, a. Okay, so not a lot of movement with my mouth. It's just a very, you know, very small movement. So that's what we're talking about, kind of short movement, long movement, when we talk about short and long vowels. A short vowel, and real quick, just a short vowel is pronounced um, 
we pronounce a short vowel when the vowel when the 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 vowel is alone. Okay, so when there's just one vowel surrounded by consonants, a lot of consonants, then it gets a short pronunciation. Whereas long vowels, there needs to be either two vowels next to each other or just one consonant in between the vowels. So let's look at your examples. Um, university, and again, there's always exceptions. You know, there's a lot, there's still exceptions to the rules, but really it's kind of that. 80-20 um, rule is 80% of the of the time the rules will apply, and then 20% you're going to have to learn the except you know we'll have to learn the exceptions. But umbrella, and I'm going to bring this up here. Umbrella versus university, and thankfully you didn't you didn't use any um, exceptions to the rules. But umbrella, if you look at it, we have U, and then we have two consonant, three consonants after it. Okay, so really that U is alone. It's by itself. It's just kind of on its own. Um, whereas here with university, we have a vowel, U, a consonant, and then another vowel right next, you know, really close to it. There's only one consonant in between, so they're considered close enough to make that first that first vowel be pronounced as the long pronunciation. Okay, so hopefully that's making sense. So think of it, short pronunciations are a, 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 some of these short vowels, short, short in their movement, and those are going to be when the vowel is alone, meaning if there's just one vowel, there's not other vowels around it, there's you know two or more consonants in between it and the next vowel. It's a long pronunciation when vowels are right next to each other or there's just one consonant in between those vowels. Okay, so think of it, here's a little saying, when two vowels go walking, the first one does the talking. So when two vowels are right next to each other, the first vowel is gonna get its long pronunciation. Okay, so that was really quick. That was a kind of a, here you go, here's that long and short vowel summary, um, the rules with it. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you're not quite too weak, there, I also have a webinar, um, that we talked about this and in the webinar section, I think it's labeled about long and short vowel rules. So go through that and kind of review that. You can review this webinar again and, um, and review that. You will be getting this worksheet in week five before you get into the vowels. So that will give you a chance to really kind of help that sink in. So this is the first, if this is the first time you're hearing this rule, don't worry about being like, oh, I don't quite fully understand that. You will. We'll re repeat it. We'll repeat it several times through the program and make sure that you're, you're familiar with that. Okay? Great questions, you guys. I'm really happy with the way this uh, webinar kind of uh, went today. And um, hopefully you are too and that you got your questions answered and that you learned some things. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really just so grateful that you're here and that you, um, that you're going through this course and that you're, um, that we've been able to work together today. So if you have any, <clears throat> you have any questions, um, uh, go ahead and email me, Annie at pronunciationpro.com. We'll, uh, we can kind of help you with, help you with anything with the program. Um, it helps to get feedback and it helps to get um, questions so I know how to improve the program because that's what we're really um, working on is just making sure that we have what you need to be as successful as possible with this and, and organizing it in a way that makes sure that you're not overwhelmed by the amount of information but that you can um, kind of trust us to say here go walk down this path with us and we will guide you to where you know to to accomplishing that goal of clear english pronunciation and fluency and making sure that you can you know a, achieve the goals that you want of a, a better job or um, you know just just being able to easily converse with people in english with uh, and feel confident and feel um feel like your English and your English spoken English is not getting in the way of what you really want to do. And um, we're, we're working on removing that barrier for you so that you can, you can achieve what you're really wanting to achieve. All right. And that's, that's the main motivation of why we, why we're doing what we're doing and what our, you know, our team here is working on um, is just helping you remove that barrier so that you can 
can do do and accomplish what you you want to accomplish in your life. So thank you for trusting me and and helping me guide you along this way and and please let me know if you have any questions.